All righty. So we're getting ready to talk about homework for this last week. And you worked on another paragraph of your desert reptiles report. So you're learning how to write a report. And so far you should have two paragraphs. One is about the um, Sahara sand viper, right? And then the second paragraph was about the Mojave rattlesnake. If you have two paragraphs, give me a thumbs up. Yay, both of you, nice. Okay, um, before I let you share, if you wanna share, before we do that, I want you to look at your second paragraph, the one that you worked on just this last week and check to see if you underlined all of your dress up words. Now you should have, let me check the checklist. You should have four words underlined. Give me a thumbs up if you have four words underlined in your second paragraph. I see thumbs up from Harmony and a sideways. How many words do you have, Lizbeth? Oh, Harmony has three. Okay, Lizbeth has three. So we need four. So look at your paragraph. Do you have an L-Y adverb underlined? Give me a thumbs up if you have L-Y adverb. Good. How about who or which? Do you have a who or which? Good. Got that. How about a strong mm -hmm. verb? Do you have a strong verb? Okay, Lizbeth says yes. No, Harmony, no. Okay, and then how about the because clause. Okay, Lizveth says no, Harmony says yes. Okay, so I bet you have a strong verb in there, Harmony. If you look for a word that's an action word, see what action words. So something that says what maybe what the Mojave rattlesnake can do. I see Lizveth doing emotion. <laughs> what is your strong verb, Lizveth? Senses. I know Harmony said when, can you say that again, Harmony? Senses. Senses. Um, how is it used in the sentence? Can you read that whole sentence? It has pits on its nose, which sense heat from predators. Yes. Okay, good. That is a good word. Did you underline it? Sense? Okay, good. So now you should have all of yours underlined. That's good. I like that. That was a good choice there for your strong verb. And then Lizbeth, I think you were missing because, huh? Did you find a spot to put it in there? How about we start with yours, Lizbeth? We'll help you find a spot for because. Okay, go ahead and read your paragraph and then we can help you find a good spot for that. Um, do I read the Sahara or the Mojave? Rattlesnake? Just the Mojave rattlesnake one, just that paragraph. Okay. The Mojave rattlesnake is a dangerous rattlesnake. This rattlesnake has a rejectable fangs that inject venom. It rattles and eventually strikes when it feels threatened. Some Mojave rattlesnakes have diamond-like patterns on their backs. The snake sheds skin, with which then reveals the snake's age by the size of the rattle. It senses heat and locates predators and ants or prey with the two pits on its face. The Mojave rattlesnake is not hibernates during winter. Nice, very good. Yay, let's do a hand hand jive for her. <laughs> good job, Lizbeth. I really like it. So I I was thinking maybe even your first sentence, you could probably think of a because there. So just go back to your very first sentence and tell me what that was again. The Mojave rattlesnake is a dangerous rattlesnake. Yes, and do you can you explain why it would be a dangerous rattlesnake? It injects venom. Yes, and I think you had that in your second sentence. 
-hmm. but maybe you could say it's poisonous. That's another way to say that it injects venom. Mm -hmm. So what if you add at the very first sentence, the Mojave rattlesnake is armed and dangerous because it's poisonous. Mm -hmm. It's a poisonous snake or something like that. Do you like that idea? Yeah. Okay. So you can put, do you remember the little carrot symbol? It's like an arrow that you can put there. And then in the space between your lines, you can add because... And you can change that if you want. You can say because it's a poisonous snake or because it has venom or however you want to explain why it's armed and dangerous. Very good, Lizbeth. Okay, Harmony, can you read your paragraph? The one about the Mojave rattlesnake? The Mojave rattlesnake is very dangerous because it has retracted fangs and very powerful venom when threatened the Mojave rattlesnake will repeatedly, repeatedly rattle its tail before it strikes good the snake has diamond like patterns and a rattle grows with its age. It has pits on its nose, which senses heat from predators. The Mojave rattlesnake is nocturnal and hibernates in the winter. Nice. Let's give Harmony a hand jive, Elizabeth. Woohoo! I love it. Good job, Harmony. Really good. So another thing I wanted to ask you both is, and she she gave you a clapping emoji. <laughs> um, did you remember to do the topic clencher words too? Remember that part of the checklist? Oh, I see a thumbs up from Harmony. So. Did you highlight them, Harmony, or did you put a box around those words? How did you how did you mark it on your paper? We underlined them. Okay, you underlined them. So we want to make sure that the way you um, identify those is different than the dress up. So I recommend either you put a box around those words, or you can use an actual highlighter. But if you underline them, it kind of looks like it could be a dress up word. So maybe do it a little bit different for the topic clincher. Lizbeth, oh, okay, you, she's going somewhere. That's fine. So, what words, Harmony, do you have for your topic clincher in that paragraph about the Mojave rattlesnake? Mm -hmm. What did you write? You wrote what? Mojave rattlesnake. You just use that twice. Mahavi okay. How do I use Mahavi? I use Mahavi Rattlesnake as a clincher. Okay, good. So you have Mojave Rattlesnake in the first sentence and then Mojave Rattlesnake in the last sentence too? Okay, good. And then, so on that, you can put a little box around Mojave and then a box around the word rattlesnake in those two sentences. And then that way, you know, that's the topic clincher. Okay. That's good, Harmony. Good job. Not so awesome. fast. And then. Not like a hitchhiker. Are you guys good? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. good. Yes. Lizbeth, um, how about you? What was your topic clincher for Mojave Rattlesnake? What is the topic clincher again? Remember those, remember the little thing I taught you guys, the topic sentence and the clincher sentence must, remember that? Repeat or reflect two or three key words. So it's when you have 
two, at least two words in your first sentence and your last sentence that are the same or almost the same. Remember that? Do you have that in yours? Um, when you highlight the name of the subject? Um, it could be something like that. It's highlighted. You're right about that. But it should be like for Harmony, she used the words Mojave and rattlesnake in her mm -hmm. first sentence. And then again, in her last sentence, she used Mojave and rattlesnake. So that's that's her topic clincher. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Maybe you already have that. So I have Mojave rattlesnake on the top. Yeah. And I use Mojave rattlesnake on the bottom. Perfect. Okay, so all you need to do is put a box around those words. Mm -hmm. So put a box with your pencil. You can put a box around Mojave in both the first and last sentence, and then put a box around Rattlesnake. And you already had it, so that was really good. So. Good job, girls, you're on the right track. And now we're gonna move on to the last paragraph of your report. We have one more source to look at and we're gonna build our keyword outline just like we did with, for the other two. And then you're gonna write the last paragraph of your report the same way. So let's look at, Go ahead and get out your keyword outline that we've been working on. We've been working on this for the last few weeks. This one. Just remember the subject is desert reptiles. That's what we're that's what the report is about. And um You've already talked about the Sahara sand viper, and then you already did a paragraph about the Mojave rattlesnake. So now we're ready for the last one here. And that one is called the Gray's Monitor. And I didn't really know. Yeah, the Gray's Monitor. It, it's this page right here. Page 87. I didn't really know much about the Gray's Monitor before I read this. So this is kind of interesting to me. Do you remember, you know, we've been talking about reptiles um, and we know that a reptile is a snake, but what other reptiles are there? Lizbeth? Frogs, lizards. Actually, mm. you're right about lizards, but frogs are called am amphibians, so they're a different... Oh, yeah. But you're right. Lizards, yes. So snakes, lizards, and were you going to say one more? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Those are extinct now, so we don't have dinosaurs mm -hmm. anymore, but they... Are they a reptile? I think so. Yeah, because they lay eggs. Oh, Okay. So I, I think like desert tortoises are also considered a reptile too, aren't they? They're, they're cold blooded and um, you're right, they lay eggs, except didn't we learn that the Sahara sand viper didn't lay eggs, huh? Was that the one? Oh, one of them no. gave, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Was it the Sahara sand viper that actually laid, that actually um, gave birth to live? Oh, yeah. Yes. yes, it was Sahara sand viper. So not all reptiles lay eggs. So now we know that. Okay, so this is page 87. Give me a thumbs up if you have this, the Gray's monitor. Okay, good. You have it too, Harmony? Yes. Okay, good. So what we're going to do is read this. And then we're going to talk about what we think is interesting that we want to include in 
our keyword outline. Because remember, this is a lot of facts and we only need to come up with, how many are we looking for? Six facts here. So this has more than six. So we're gonna take turns telling me which facts that you wanna include in your report about the graze monitor. This is part of the desert reptiles. Okay. The graze monitor, also known as the desert monitor, is a large lizard that lives in the Sahara Desert, the Arabian Peninsula, and the deserts of Central Asia. In the wild, they can grow over three feet, which is the same as 0.91 meters in length and weigh up to three pounds or 1.3 kilograms. The monitor's forked mouth, I'm sorry, tongue, helps it smell prey. Gray's monitors have venom in their saliva and strong jaws to help them bite and chew. Their powerful tails can be used like whips for defense. They range in color from simple gray to brighter colors with stripes. I'm gonna pause there for a second and make sure you understand what saliva is. Do you know what saliva is? Lizbeth, what's saliva? You remember? No, do you know what saliva is, Harmony? Spit. Yes, good. It's the spit in our mouth. Is that what you were thinking, Lizbeth? Yeah. And, we, and it's always wet inside our mouth. It helps us to chew and digest, you know, get food ready to go down to our stomach. And it's, it's very important for us to have that in our mouth. Well, for a lizard, these guys, the gray monitor, it says here that their saliva, they have venom in their saliva. What was, what is venom? Lizbeth, what is venom? Venom is a poisonous thing that is a strong, that's strong and powerful. Yes, it's poison. You're right. Because with the other snakes, like the rattlesnake and the Sahara sand viper, when they bite, they have venom in their fangs, remember? And if mm -hmm. that gets in uh, like another animal's blood, then it'll kill them. It's mm -hmm. very deadly. So this is kind of crazy. This is the saliva inside the lizard's mouth. Just like we have saliva, ours isn't poisonous, right? But for these guys, watch out. All right. And then they have powerful tails. Okay, so then we're gonna keep going here. What gray gray's monitors eat depends on where they live. They eat other lizards and snakes, ground nesting birds, tortoises, eggs, toads, gerbils, and young rabbits. They also sometimes eat carrion, including dead hedgehogs, cats, and dogs. Gray's monitors also can also feed on beetles, ants, snails, centipedes, and scorpions. Occasionally, Gray's monitors have been known to eat fruits and vegetables if they must. In fact, it seems they will eat almost anything. Okay, so... Um, Carrion is another word for like dead animals. So these animals that they, it's kind of like if you've ever seen a crow, um, sometimes if there's a, a dead squirrel, the crow will come down and eat the dead animal. That's, that's the kind of meat that these guys also eat. So, um, and sometimes they eat, I like how they said that. They'll eat fruits and vegetables if they must. It sounds like they prefer meat. But do you know what that word is? If they eat both meat and plants, do you know what, what that's called? Lizbeth, what's that called? Omnivores. Yes, very good, omnivores. Oh, there's more on the back. Go ahead and turn your page over. And look, here's a picture of him or her. We don't know, but it's Gray's monitor. To me, 
he looks grumpy. <laughs> Maybe he's hungry. Anyway, okay, I'll keep reading. Gray's monitors like to be solitary or alone. They will attack if they feel threatened and seem to be grumpier. I was right. Grumpier in cooler weather. When kept as pets, some monitors have lived to be 25 years old and grow up to six pounds, which is the same as 2.7 kilometers, I mean, kilograms. Although it may seem exciting to have Gray's monitors as pets, they cannot really be tamed. Many will try to bite their owners even after years in captivity. All right, here's this word tamed. Does anybody know what tamed means? Harmony, do you know what tamed means? What? Tamed. Oh, tamed. It's hard to say. I don't know. Tell me. Do you know what it means, Harmony? I don't know. Okay, that's okay. How about Lizbeth? I think you might know what it means. It means train. Um, like not train. Exactly. Kind of, but you're probably thinking more of like a dog because you can train a dog, right? Mm -hmm. But this this is just the opposite of wild. So, um, tamed is like. I think some, let's think here for a second, like those um, kimono dragons. Have you heard of those before? There, you can have those as a pet and you can hold them and they're not going to try to bite you or hurt you. They're, they're more calm. Um, and then it's basically, it's, it is kind of like trained, you're right, where they don't bite you, right? They don't hurt you. But this says that they cannot really be tamed. So really, these guys are going to bite with their saliva that has venom in it no matter what. Even if you're nice to them, even if you feed them and you take care of them and you have them in a nice little tank or something at your house, if you go to pick them up, they're going to bite you still. So they can't be tamed. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. Okay, good. So... um. Now we know a little bit about Gray's monitor. So we have one, two, three paragraphs again, and we need six facts about Gray's monitor. So we could look for a couple in each paragraph and that'll be about right. So the first thing we need to do though is put our topic here. Now I'm looking at our notes. This is way back on July 3rd. So we've been working on this for a while. The third topic is, you probably guessed, Gray's monitor. Gray's monitor. And that's what we're talking about today. That's the third topic for the Desert Reptile Report. We have enough room for one more word here about the Gray's monitor. And I'm thinking because we're talking about reptiles and we've talked about vipers and rattlesnakes. These are snakes. I'm thinking if we put the word lizard here, that would be a good third word to put on our outline here to, to help introduce what a Gray's monitor is. So I'm going to put lizard here. And lizards, as you know, have legs, like the picture on the back. Snakes do not have legs, do they? They just slither on their bellies. But these guys are lizards, so they have a, a legs and a tail. All right, so we're gonna do like we've been doing the last couple of times. I'm gonna have you girls take turns telling me interesting facts that you learned from this article that we just read. So let's just focus on the first paragraph here. 
And I'll start with Lizbeth. Did you hear something interesting from here that you want to put in your report from the first paragraph? And then I'll have Harmony do the next one so she can be looking ahead at something that something you find interesting in the first paragraph. That it, it weighs up to three pounds. Good. Okay. I like that too. That's interesting. So how can we put that in our outline here? Um, weighs... Raise mm, up three. Oh, raise three pounds. Okay. And if you wanted to include up, maybe you could even do like an up arrow. Would that help you remember? Mm -hmm. So we could put way. And then maybe up we could actually do well we could do the number three too that would work we don't really need to because we have room for two two more words so we could spell out three and then pounds weighs up to three pounds that would work or if you have a, a different way to put that, you can put it whichever way you want to pick. Good. Okay. I didn't put my commas in here. There we go. Now, Harmony, you're gonna look at the same paragraph, okay? Did you see anything else that was interesting in there that you wanna put in your report? Feels like lips. Tails like lips. Tails like whips. Oh, they're tails, yeah. That was interesting. Powerful tails can be used like whips for defense. Good. So how can we put that in three words? Did you, I think you already said it actually. Did you put say tails like whips? You want to put those three words? Yes. Okay. That's good. And then Lizbeth, if you have something different, that's okay. You can put whatever fact that you like from there too. So I'm going to put harmonies, tails, like whips. You know what a whip is, right? A whip is like a stick with a piece of leather on it. And when you swing it fast, it snaps, right? It's like, like that and it's a weapon you know a long 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 time ago people would use it on animals and stuff but not anymore because it's not nice to use those but a whip is just like the motion of the tail I bet it moves really fast and I bet he uses it like a weapon against his predators I'm guessing maybe he he swings it around it says for defense so he he uses it to protect himself from predators so okay that's good so far we have two we need six all together so we need just a little bit more look at the second paragraph now this is this one here it starts with what gray monitors eat so i'm going to have each of you choose one fact from this paragraph to put in your report. So what do you think, Lizbeth? In the, 
in the top or in the bottom? On the bottom. So here, let me cover this one. It starts right here, the second paragraph, where it starts with what grave monitors, what graze monitors eat at this paragraph right here. Mm -hmm. That there would be a quorum. A carrion. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Which is dead hedgehogs, cats, and dogs, sadly. Mm -hmm. But um, yes. So how can we put that in our outline in three words? So I think carrion, um, cats. And dogs. Okay. I wonder if we need the word eat though, because it's that's telling us that's telling us what they eat. I wonder if we could put carrion cats eat or eat first, eat carry on. Cats, or you can choose one of them, or you could even say eat dead cats or dogs or hedgehogs. Either one of those would work for how you put it in there. So, what did you? What do you think, Lizbeth? Um, I think Caron. Okay. Cats. I'm going to eat, carry on, and cats. Okay. I want to make sure that I am... Carrion. Carrion. I was saying it wrong. I was like, that didn't sound right. Instead of carry on, it's carrion. That's how you would pronounce that word, carrion. So eat... Carrion, which is an, a word to describe dead animals, basically, is what that means. And then you said cats, right? Mm -hmm. So you could use the sentence like, they eat carrion like cats, or um, they eat carrion such as dead cats. I know it's kind of sad when you talk about cats and dogs, right? Because we love those. Mm -hmm. I do. And it's kind of sad, but it could be wild cats and wild dogs that don't have a home is my guess. But um, anyway, that is what they eat. It's crazy because those are big animals. So I guess these lizards, you know, they, they can, they can handle that. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's go back to that paragraph. Now it's Harmony's turn. What else did you find interesting in that second paragraph of that page here? Beetles and snails. Beetles and snails. Ew. <laughs> Ants and snails. Beetles, ants, and snails. Okay, let's put that. That's something else they eat. So let's put beetles. We can do that right after that last one. Beetles, ants, snails. Now, when you girls get to that sentence, you're gonna have to really stretch your brains on how you're gonna say that because eat is a band word now, right? Oh, just kidding, no, it's not. One of my other classes it is, so don't worry about that. You can use eat, but you might wanna come up with another way to say it. If you use it in that sentence, you might wanna say something different like they also consume or gobble up beetles, ants, and snails, something like that. So you don't use eat 
two times in a row, basically. All righty, we've got one last paragraph on the back, this page. So each of you can pick one fact. What do you think? I'm going to go to you next, Elizabeth. What fact do you want to put from that paragraph? Um, hold up. Let's see. Um... They cannot really be tamed. Oh, cannot really be tamed. Okay. Okay, that's good. So what would what three words would you use for that? Cannot. Good. They cannot tame. Okay. Or cannot be tamed. Either you can use that as well. Yeah, I think cannot be tamed. Okay. Cannot be tamed. And I'm not going to put commas there because they kind of go together. Cannot be tamed. So those are my three words, though. And it's okay that some of these facts are out of order. I wanted you to know that it's okay. It doesn't have to be in a certain order because you're just taking the, the facts that you find interesting about it and putting it in here for your notes. So we have one left. So now we're back to when Harmony's done writing, I'll give you a minute to finish that. Then you can tell us one more fact that you thought was interesting in the last paragraph. Warm beer and cooler weather. Yeah, I was thinking that too. I like that one. That's funny. I'm the opposite. I don't know about you girls, but I'm grumpier in hotter weather. <laughs> so I think that's funny that they are grumpier in cooler weather. So what words should we put there, Harmony? What three words should we put on our outline? Grumpier, cooler weather. Okay, good. I like that. Grumpier, comma, cooler. Weather. Grumpier. Do you get it, Lizbeth? Good, okay. That's good. That's a good full outline. So just to remind you, this is how you would do a report. Like if you had an assignment from your teacher and your teacher said, uh, do a report on desert reptiles, then this is where you would find your information, right? It could be a book. It could be something on the internet that you find. It could be a, a documentary or some um uh, information you find in a video. When you gather all your information, you can make an outline like this. So remember, this is your subject, desert reptiles. And then each topic are examples of the desert reptiles, Sahara sand viper, Mojave rattlesnake, and now we have Gray's monitor. 
And then when you put all this together, you have a report about desert reptiles. Now, usually after this, we'll start talking a little bit about an introduction paragraph and a conclusion paragraph. Have you heard those words before? Introduction and conclusion. That just means when you introduce something, it's like you're telling the reader what you're going to talk about, basically. And then in the conclusion, you kind of finalize everything that you're trying to tell your reader. So usually reports are five paragraphs, but yours is three paragraphs. You're talking about three different topics here about desert reptiles. Now let's look though at our checklist. So go ahead and get your checklist out. This is page 89, desert reptiles. And so far you both have been doing a great job remembering to put in your dress up words but I wanna go back through and just check and make sure we remember all the parts to the checklist. So you already know about your name and then double space, you already do that. But now that you're gonna finish your third paragraph about the um, Gray's monitor, now you're gonna come up with a title for your report. And you can call it Desert Reptiles, but remember, whatever you decide to call it, you need to make sure that the words, it says title centered and repeats one to three key words from final sentence. That's the very last sentence of your report. The very, very, very last sentence needs to have one to three words that match the title, okay? So the last sentence really has two jobs. The last sentence is the clincher, right? You remember the topic clincher rule. You want it, let's do this together. I'll say it and then you repeat it, okay? The topic sentence. The topic sentence. And the clincher sentence. And the clincher sentence. Must. Must. Repeat or reflect. Repeat or reflect. Two or three. Two or three key words. key words. Nice. Very good. So that last sentence of your report has that job of the clincher and the job of the title rule, where it has to have one to three words from the last sentence in the title. It has to match. Okay. So don't forget that one. And then here's the topic clincher. There's the rule for you to remember. Topic clincher sentences, repeat or reflect two to three key words. And it says to highlight or bold. So you can, that just means you can put a box around it or you can use a highlighter. Have you ever used one of these before? These highlighters? Yeah. And you can put it right over the word and highlight that word. You can use those too. Okay. And don't worry about that last box on top because you're gonna turn it in on Google Classroom. So you don't have to do that one. But here's your dress ups. We got LY adverb, who, which clause, strong verb, and because clause. You girls are really good at remembering that. So remember it again on your last paragraph. And now these are the band words. I don't think you need to worry about say said because nobody's talking in your report, right? <laughs> We're talking about animals, they don't speak especially snakes and lizards, they're pretty quiet. Seesaw, I don't think you're gonna be using that or think, thought, or go, went. That's more like when you're writing a story about like the little red hen. Remember when you guys wrote about that and then she was talking and stuff and that made it kind of hard to watch out for those band words, so. Okay, we got a few more minutes, so. Let's do a little practice. By the way, I can't believe this, but next week is our last class for summer. So we have today and then next Monday, and then we're done with our class. And then I'm starting up new classes in August for the next binder. I know we're not going to get to the end of the binder, but that's okay. You guys definitely are far enough in the binder that you are ready for the next level. Um, so 
because it reviews a lot of what you've already done at a, at a little bit of a harder level, not super hard. So don't worry, it's not super hard, but a little bit, little bit onto the next level. So I'll be emailing both of your parents to uh, let them know what the plan is for that and to give you the links to the materials and all that stuff. So, but if you don't take my class in the fall, that's okay. You don't have to, okay? It's up to your parents if you want to, if they want you to, <laughs> I'll say it that way. Since we have a little bit of time left over, let's practice using our words in sentences. Do you remember way back when we did that? Where you look at the three words and then you think of a whole sentence and then you look at the camera and say the whole sentence. Remember how we did that? So let's practice that. I'll have Lizbeth go first and I'm just gonna stop the share so we can see each other a little bit better. And do you have any questions for me first before we go on to this? Do you have any questions, Lizbeth or Harmony? No? If you don't have any questions, okay, you can just shake your head. Okay. So the first one there at Roman numeral three says, Gray's monitor lizard. So you can start, Lizbeth, look at those three words, think of a sentence, a whole sentence, and then look at the computer and tell us a whole sentence, okay? The gray's monitor is a lizard, not a snake. Good. I thought that was perfect. The only thing you forgot to do was look at the camera or look at me in the in the screen. So try it one more time while you're looking at me. Oh, you're muted. There you go. The gray's monitor is not a snake. It's a lizard. I like it. Good job. Good sentence. Okay, so Harmony, you're gonna do the next one on your checklist, on, on your keyword outline, where it says way, and then we have an up arrow, and then we have three and pounds. Look, think of a sentence, and then look at the camera or the computer and tell us a sentence using those words. Ways, no. Use number one and put it in the chat. Way, it can. Say it loud. Say it loud. Way up three pounds. That's good. That is what it says on the outline. But can you make that into a whole sentence? A complete it sentence? It can. It can way up three pounds. Up three up two free pounds. There you go. Good, Harmony. It can weigh up to three pounds. That's good. Good job. And then back to Elizabeth. Go ahead and do the next one. Tails like whips. Go ahead and do that one in a whole sentence when you're ready. That's for Elizabeth. And then Harmony, you'll do the next one. Gray monitors use their tails like whips to de to defend themselves. For Good. Defense. Okay, for you can either say for defense or to defend themselves. Either way is a good sentence. So say it one more time. The gray monitor uses its tails tail like a whip whip to defend it. Self. Okay, good. To defend itself. Good, Lizbeth. I like it. Okay, Harmony, you have eat, carrion, and cats. That's a tough one. Eat, carrion, and cats. In a full sentence. Give a full sentence. They will eat, carrion, and cats. Okay, good. And I, I know that's kind of an odd sentence, but maybe if you added, they can eat carrion like cats or such as cats. I don't know if carrion cats, I haven't really used that word carrion much, actually. It's not a common word we use. So I don't know if that, they can eat carrion cats. 
such as cats probably would make sense. So carrion just means dead flesh. That's what it means. Like when an animal dies in the wild outside, you know, and then something comes along and eats it, they call that carrion. That's the meat. Yeah. But anyway, you're on the right track, Harmony. That's kind of a little tricky one, how to how to incorporate carrion and cats together, but you'll get that. That's good. And then back to, let's see what time we got. Oh, we got a couple of minutes. Let's see if we can do one more each. So number four, go ahead and do that one, Elizabeth. November 5th. Um, Mrs. C. Uh huh. What's the What's the last the last uh three words? Okay, let me share my screen. Are you looking at number four? Right um, here. Are you looking at number um, six? I was looking at number six because um. I forgot to put it. Oh, okay. You can put that down. I'll have Harmony go next. It's grumpier, cooler, and weather. We'll come back to number four. So number five is Harmony's cannot be tamed. How can you use those three words to make it into a whole sentence? Cannot be tamed. They cannot be tamed. Yeah. They cannot be tamed. Good. Yes. And it's good that you use the word they because you don't want to say Gray's monitor too many times because then it sounds like you're repeating it too many times. So you're right. They cannot be tamed. That was pretty easy. Very good. Okay, Lizbeth, back to number four. That was yours. Beetles, ants, and snails. Um, Beetles, ants, and They eat beetles, ants, and snails. Nice. Good. Yes. That's very good. And then the grand finale, the last sentence here, grumpier, cooler weather. Does anyone want to volunteer for that one? Grumpier, cooler, and weather. How can we make that into a, a whole sentence? Grumpier, cooler weather. Grumpier, cooler, Ooh, who's and grumpier? weather. Grumpier, cooler, and weather. Who's grumpier? Gray's monitor. Gray's monitor. R. 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 What? R. Cooler. Grumpier in cooler weather. There you go. Good. Grumpier in cooler weather. That's right. Very good. And so I heard you say Gray's monitor. And if you do that, you'll already have your clincher. Because we have Gray's monitor. You mentioned that in the first sentence. So you can use those as your topic clincher words too. Okay, you girls are ready to write this paragraph. So what you're going to do is add this to your other two paragraphs. So when you turn in your homework this next week, you'll have three paragraphs all together. Okay, you'll have each one of these is a paragraph and you're on the last one. So don't forget to make a title for your report. And then next week will be our last class. So I'll have you share your report. You can read it, the whole thing. And then we'll do a couple other things during class. And then that'll be it for this summer session. You girls are doing awesome. Super proud of you both. You have any questions for me? Any questions? Yes. What's your question, Harmony? No. You don't have a question. <laughs> nope. Tell me. I have a question. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to.